to blown throne yeah, light and sight. Ready? our minds and still our hearts and souls as we raise our voices to you, that we may join the music and the beauty that surrounds your heavenly throne, where all the saints and angels are gathered. We lift our prayers today for those who have gone before us, and that we will pray that they come to know you in a greater way. We ask that you be with the families of those who have lost loved ones this past year, who, who we remember particularly this evening. So in all that we do, may our voices give honor and glory to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 The right <laughs> oh, did anybody take a, a, a folder that had no name on it? Anybody? No, no, it's a blue one. It's a blue one. Okay, then, then, the, then I think I think we have I think we have the rapture. Yeah. Oh, here. You sitting in the first row or the second this row? Is the second. Yeah. second row. Yeah. Okay. Paul, Paul. Are you leaving us to communion? No. No. No, I'm going up by myself. Yeah, okay. And who's ever on that end would leave. Usually, I like to do both. Well, Sunday when I had that rehearsal, I moved things around. There's a wire that's kind of but stray for one of the mics. You need to, you need to work on that water. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little one. Don't get it. Yeah, it's there. Um, it's there. Yeah. 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 
If any of you are going to be around on the 19th for the for the organ celebration, I heard I heard from some of you, and there's a couple of pieces that are based on chant. Yes. Yeah, that are based on chant. Um, like Ubi Caritas, and um, uh, there's a um, um, Ave Maria Stella. And before Matt plays them, I thought it'd be kind of cool if we had some men. I got some friends coming too, and we can like do it from the from far away and kind of get atmosphere and everything. I thought it'd be kind of cool. So, you know, and I'll I'll send it. It's 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 for very predictable stuff. So, yeah. So. That's the nineteenth. Yeah, Friday night the nineteenth. Okay, you don't have to play it. You don't have to play it. Well, unless you want to. I got a really good picture of it. I can play on the twentieth. I can bluff through it. I know some chords, but. I took a really cool picture of it today. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So, that was that. Oh, the men? No. The Russians? Yeah. I love all the comedy. This was one of my old essays. Yes, I It's so true, I laughed. I thought it was you. something in place they'll start turning the clock into it or something.
There's a uh, three-hole punch in the... Uh, okay. There's definitely an extraordinary look at the three Okay. okay. <coughs> it's me, all that stuff, I see rocks straight out of the ground, so... That's what I'm
Welcome to Our Lady Star of the Sea Parish as we celebrate the solemnity of all souls. At this time, please turn off or silence your cell phones and let us take a moment of silence as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Our opening hymn is found in the red hymnal, number 886, number 886. Ye watchers and ye holy ones, stanzas one, three, and four. One, three, and four. <laughs> the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good evening and welcome to this very special celebration where we commemorate not only all the faithful departed, but especially those who have died during this past year. A year that we know is very difficult. Uh, some people could not attend funerals. Someone could not be with people when they were dying. But we come with perhaps a heavy heart, but also to pray, hearts filled with hope, because of our faith that we have. Jesus, you gather us, your children, into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You help us along our pilgrim way through your word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. And as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
and the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away from us was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if in the sight of others indeed they be punished, Yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. O Lord, you are my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures, where you give me repose. Near restful watches you lead me to revive my drooping spirit. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing indeed shall I want. You guide me along the right path, you are true to your name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. My shepherd is a You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. My weapon is the Lord. Nothing in Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. My shepherd is the Lord, everything in me.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find the courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? If indeed, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. I think there's a lot of wisdom in the church in celebrating yesterday the solemnity of all saints and today the commemoration of all the faithful departed, commonly known as All Souls Day. Because the two celebrations complement each other. We are called to holiness in our life begins at the time that we were baptized. To live in that image of Jesus Christ of dying to self for the sake of others. To live in that image of Christ where what we do and say gives God praise, honor, and glory, all that we do. And that as the disciples of Jesus, through our baptism, we are called to do the will of the Father, just as Jesus did the will of the Father. And that's to live a life of holiness, 
to strive for sainthood and to again recall that all saints, human beings, are also sinners. And that in itself should give us great hope that though we are sinners, that we too can be saints and be saints in God's heavenly kingdom. Now certainly there are those who have been proclaimed such. There are those who have not been technically proclaimed by the church, but certainly with God's gracious love and mercy, our saints, and they're in that heavenly kingdom. And the celebration of this day is to, to commemorate all the faithful departed, all the faithful departed, so that as we continue to pray for them, we continue to offer our sacrifices for them, that it might assist in their purification, to be then prepared for the glory of God. Because in our sinfulness, there's things that need to be purified, things that maybe we still need to let go totally in order to wholly accept God and all of God's glory and honor. And as someone once said, their goal is just to be on that purgatory train. If you're on the purgatory train, at least you know where you're ultimately going. And perhaps that's a, a good way, at least for us to start, that we want to be on that train, because ultimately it can still lead us into God's heavenly kingdom, that we can still become saints and to be with God and all of his saints in his heavenly kingdom. It's good that we have these celebrations because maybe these are the days, and maybe especially the month of November, traditionally set aside to pray for the faithful departed, that we can really think about this reality of our life, that being death. That we can really think about what happened or what happened when a person has died. Because you all know that when we are experiencing the death of a loved one, there's so much going on, so many details to perhaps arrange and take care of and places to go and things that you got to do that with the emotion, with the busyness, sometimes we really don't have the opportunity to really reflect on the role of our faith in the passing of a loved one. And to really think about like what we heard, even though these are oftentimes readings proclaimed at a funeral, like from wisdom, that in the eyes of the foolish, when death comes, it seems like, well, that's the end. But it's only with wisdom we see that there's something more, that there's something there that God is involved in. And though it might seem to us that person has lost their life here on earth, but in God's wisdom, they've gained something more. And that's why Paul reminds us that hope does not disappoint us. Hope does not disappoint us. Because those who have faith in Jesus Christ and live with that faith in Jesus Christ, you have that hope that, yes, when we pass from this life to the next, that we too are going to be raised up with the Lord, especially on the last day, and, and live with the Lord forever. And hopefully that is our goal as we live every day, every hour, every minute, every second here on earth. Sometimes we need days like All Souls Day, or again perhaps on the anniversary of one's death. But think about the significance, the faith that we hold for those who have died. The faith that we hold and hope for when we die and pass from this life to the next. Yes, we still have a great deal of emotions, of sorrow, of frustration, of sadness, loneliness. Especially when we come to experience those firsts in the year of passing, first Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthday, anniversary, first anniversary of death, wedding anniversary, all those significant holidays that we realize a loved one is not with us. And that's something, though, too, that our faith can help us with. Yes, there is sadness. 
true sadness for the person who's been such an important part of our life, whether it's for five years, 18 years, 93 years. Of course, there's going to be a loss and an emptiness. But that's again where our hope in Jesus Christ can help at least to fill some of the void or give us a consolation that we pray that they are in the Lord's hand, that they have seen the face of God, and that they can intercede for us when they are there in the heavenly kingdom. Yes, sometimes we need these days in the midst of tears, in the midst of sorrow and loneliness, to still feel the presence of God in our life, those who remain, because of our faith, because of our faith, because of what Jesus promised to us, that what God gave him, Jesus is going to take us as we let him and open up our hearts to him. He is determined not to lose us. But with our open heart, and perhaps calling to mind the um, gospel of two days ago on Sunday, that yes, we have to love God with everything we have, our whole heart, mind, soul, and being with all of our strength. That gives us that hope and promise, not only for our departed loved ones, but for us. And we look forward. We look forward to the time that we all can be together around God's heavenly table in the communion of all the saints. At this time, we pause to remember those who have especially died and been buried from our parish during the past year. Maybe as, in a sense, these litany of names are read to us, you obviously think about them, especially if you know them, been acquainted with them in any way. Or perhaps even just think about all the wonderful ways in which these individuals have brought forth to others just even the smallest slice of the Paschal mystery of Jesus Christ, the smallest slice of who God is because of their goodness and the image of God placed in them the time that they were conceived and lived throughout their life, and the blessings that others have received because of these individuals that we remember tonight. Whether you're here because you know someone who is, whose name is being read off tonight, or you're here just because the good practice in, in your religion during these, all these years, you're mindful of your own family members and friends. You're here not to forget about God's abundant love for each one of us. He has chosen us. He has elected us and is always there to support us, not only on this earth, but when we pass. You will find, as we go through this little litany of names, after um, whatever, six names or so, this little response for us to sing, to help us to engage in this prayer, asking the Lord to give all the faithful departed rest and peace in God's name. And if you're here uh, representing the individual or the family being called off, one or a few of the family members can come up here. I'll assist you in lighting one of these candles. And then after that, if you'd stop at the table and also receive a cross that's been hanging up in the gathering space during the past year since uh, the funeral took place. And through this all, let's just allow that wonderful, peaceful presence of the Lord to be part of us and to help us in our prayers for all the faithful departed.
Betty Jean Ahe. John Ahe. Margaret Ahi. Joan Armbruster. Mary Asher. Dolores Bradway. Wanda Silseski, Virginia Holtz, Eudoro Cuello, William Collins. Jennifer Icogoni Eugene Ignatiak
Kenneth Cook. Jeff Kraus. Marianne Leto. Joseph Lucido. Donald Mattis. Rita Miller. Hubert Montpetit Michael Nimi Robert Neeson Carlos Perez Borja. Margaret Chalkovsky.
Roy Spezia. Jack Spiteman. Zelensky. Grant all rest, grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace.
We stand now as we offer our many prayers and petitions to the Lord. That the church may continue to grow in holiness as she spreads her message of salvation to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That elected officials may be blessed with courage and compassion in their work to uphold the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who cannot practice their faith openly may be upheld and strengthened through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, inscribed in our book of life, and those remembered at the altar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the love of God may be poured into the hearts of those among us who are grieving the loss of loved ones this past year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be shepherded by Christ to, to heaven to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, compassionate God, hear and, all, hear and answer all of our prayers we place before you. In the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our hymn is found in the red hymn bowl, 766. Seven six six, the King of Love, my Shepherd is. <laughs> Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. To his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church <clears throat> spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ellen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. <clears throat> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <coughs> Amen, 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 amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. To offer to those around us a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, but you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. and the life says the Lord whoever believes in me even though he dies will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our hymn is number 931. 931.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for coming out this evening and being a part of this special Mass and prayer for those who are dear to you and for all the faithful departed. Special thanks to our special men's chorus that was assembled for this evening and for Mr. Glenn Miller uh, for directing them. Thank you very much for enhancing our liturgy. And, yes. And I always want to thank Mrs. Uh, Debbie Veltry, who is our wonderful pastoral minister and the one who probably has met with so many of you at the time coming in to plan the funerals. She's always shows such great compassion and, and uh, understands, certainly understands what's, what it's like to lose loved ones, especially perhaps in difficult situations. Um, she's the one who keeps this, this special ministry alive and so important for us showing that compassion of Christ. So thank you, Debbie. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our hymn is number 582, 582. I know that my Redeemer lives. <laughs> 